Welcome back everyone for another week of BP Kids Online. We're so glad that you're able to join us this weekend. Hopefully you've been able to tune in over the last couple of weeks where we've started our new series called Wise. Over this series, we're gonna be talking about different people in the Bible who God gave wisdom to. And we've been talking all about the difference between being smart and being wise. We can be really smart and know a lot of things, but if we're wise, then we know what to do with all the things that we know. We can make good choices because of the wisdom that God gives us. So let's stay tuned and learn more about what it means to be wise this week. Hey kids, it's the memory verse time and that's James 1.5. Let me read it to you out loud. If you got your Bibles, follow along. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to him. So guess what? There's times in your life that you're going to need wisdom. You're not going to know the answers to things and you don't know where to find those answers, but you can find them in God because God says, I'm going to give you wisdom. If you've got a problem with your friend, you don't know how to deal with it. Ask God for wisdom. Uh, you're maybe on a test. You're like, Lord, give me some wisdom. Uh, you need to still study though, kids, but uh, God can give you wisdom in all areas of your life so that you will be fruitful and prosperous. So remember, God gives it generously and you need to ask all the time for God's wisdom. If you had the opportunity to ask God a question, what would it be? You know, I've always been wondering, God, how did you fit all those animals on that one ark? You know, there are a lot of animals. How do they fit there? Um, I think I would ask if um, my pet dog and cat are going to be in heaven with me. Why is the universe so big? I would ask God if I would ever become the best soccer player in the world. Uh, why do people get sick? Um, were there any dinosaurs on Noah's Ark? I would ask him why. Just a big overarching why. I think I'd ask God, did Adam have a favorite pet in the garden? Our big idea this week is that we can ask God our questions. When we have questions about life or questions about what decisions we should make or we really don't know what to do, we can always ask God to give us the wisdom that we need to make those decisions or to make those things happen. We can always ask God no matter what. We don't have to be afraid to ask God anything. There are no silly questions with God. We can ask Him anything that we need or anything that we might be feeling or if we ha are having trouble making a decision, he will always answer us and help us. Hey kids, today we've been learning all about how we can ask God all of our questions. And today, in today's story, we're gonna be learning about a man named Nehemiah and how he actually had to ask God his questions and how he had to ask to rebuild a wall. So, if you wanna read it with me, get out your Bibles and we're reading from Nehemiah 2, verse one to 20. Are you ready? Let's read it together. It says this. Wine was brought in for the king. It was the month of Nisan in the 20th year of his rule. I got the wine and I gave it to him. I hadn't been sad in front of him before, but now I was. So, the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You aren't sick. You must be feeling very sad. I was really afraid, but I said to the king, may you live forever. Why shouldn't I look sad? The city where my people of long ago are buried has been destroyed and fire has burned up its gates. The king said to me, what do you want? I prayed to God of heaven. Then I answered the king, are you pleased with me, king? If it pleases you, send me to Judah. Let me go to the city of Jerusalem. That's where my people are buried. I want to rebuild it. The queen was sitting beside the king. He turned and asked me, how long will your journey take? When will you get back? It pleased the king to send me. So I chose a certain time. 
I also said to him, If it pleases you, may I take some of the letters with me? I want to give them to some of the governors of the land west of Euphrates River. Then he'll help me travel safely through their territory until I arrive in Judah. May I also have a letter to Asaph? He, he takes care of the royal park. I want to give him some of the logs so I can make beams out of them. I want to use them for the gates of the fort that is by the temple. So some of the logs will also be used in the city wall. And I'll need some for the house I'm going to live in. God was kind to me and helped me. So the king gave me what I asked for. Then I went to the governors of the land west of the Euphrates River. I gave them the king's letter. He had also sent army officers and horsemen along with me. Sanballat and Tobiah heard about what was happening. Sanballat was a Huronite. Tobiah was an official from Ammon. They were very upset that someone had come to help the Israelites. I went to Jerusalem and stayed there for three days. Then at night, I took a few people with me to check out the walls. I hadn't told anyone what my God wanted me to do for Jerusalem. There weren't any donkeys with me except for the one I was riding on. That night, I went out through the valley gate. I went toward the Jackal Well and the Dung Gate. I checked out the walls of Jerusalem. They hadn't been broken down. I also checked the city gates. Fire had burned them up. I moved out toward the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there wasn't enough for my donkeys to get through. It was still night. I went up to the Kidron Valley. I kept checking the wall. Finally, I turned back. I went back in through the valley gate. The officials didn't know where I had gone or what I had done. That's because I hadn't said anything to anyone yet. I hadn't told the priests or nobles or officials, and I hadn't spoken to any other Jews who would be rebuilt, rebuilding the wall. I said to them, you can see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Then people won't be ashamed anymore. I also told them how gracious God was helping me. And as I told them what the king had said to me, they replied, let's start rebuilding. So they began that good work. But Sanballat, the Huronite, heard about it. And so did Tobiah, the official from Ammon. Geshem, the Arab, heard about it too. All of them laughed at us. They made fun of us. What do you think you are doing, they asked. Are you turning against the king? I answered. The God of heaven will give us success. We serve him, so we'll start rebuilding the walls. But you don't have to share in Jerusalem. You don't have to claim it. You don't have any right to worship here. I love this story because it reminds me that we can always go to God with our questions. Nehemiah, he wanted to rebuild the wall, and so he asked God. It was that simple. So I want you guys to be encouraged that you guys can always go to God with your questions. Hey guys, my name is Junior and today I'm going to share a story about a time when I asked God a question and he answered me. So one time I was reading the Bible and I read this verse and it made no sense to me. So I, you know, I prayed about it and I asked God and he revealed what the passage meant to me and it was awesome. So I'm just going to encourage you guys, you know, read your Bible and like when you have questions, don't be afraid to ask God because he will answer you if you ask. Hey guys, what's up? Me, I'm on the church's roof. So crazy. Anyways, we really hope that you enjoyed this entire video today. We have a couple questions, so make sure you grab your family, your friends, anybody you want. Make sure you pause the video right now and let's answer the questions. We're so glad that you were able to join us again this week for another week of BP Kids Online.
stay tuned that next week we are starting a new series called Amazed. You are not going to want to miss it. Make sure you tune in online or in person here at BP Church. Don't forget that you can pre-register online to save your seat, and we hope to see you there.